Hi guys, Bobby Gas here. I just got me a, a package in the mail. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> VCLT from Brian. Look at the size of this goddamn thing. I had to take my knife. I tried cutting through this and that. He's got so much tape on this. So I give it the old... <clears throat> and we got a flip-top box. Look what it cost to send this. 80 goddamn dollars. Brian, you know, I don't know what's in here yet. I haven't looked. I just opened it up. We'll see now. Where am I going to put this? This is heavy as shit. It'll break my computer desk. <laughs> Yeah, I'll put it up here, I think. I think I can get it up here. Nope. Have to be down here. Okay, here we go. Hang on, I gotta blow my nose. I got a bad nose ever since all them days. I don't know, 50 years ago when I was pushing powders up there all the time. <laughs> It was fun, though, guys. Wouldn't suggest it for any of you people, though. <laughs> Not everybody can handle that shit. <laughs> Egg carton. I used to buy them like that. When I used to go fishing, there was a farmer who used to fish, and uh, they'd sell flats of eggs for, like, a buck and a quarter a piece. Now, this is maybe 10, 12 years ago. But I got one flat, and this is no lie, every goddamn egg in the, la in the flat was double yokers. Whoa! They asked me to save these things, but I ain't been fishing down that way, I don't know, in years. Goes in the garbage. Or maybe I can save it for sending it to somebody. Well, here's a little note, skis. Well, read that first. It's a little card. Make sure there's no money in there. 80 bucks to send that. Uh, incredible. Them, them, these male people, I'm telling you. All right, he's got a picture of a little, I don't know, there you go. What is that, a, a goat? And it says here, Happy New Year, Bobby. I hope you enjoy these albums. Hope you have a wonderful day, Brian. Well, you know I'm going to enjoy the albums, because you've been watching my channel, you figured out some of the music I like, and I don't like. I can guarantee you, pretty much, that there will not be any jazz in here. You know, I, I knock jazz all the time, eh? And I knock Beatle fans, and, well, you know, for me, that's fun. If you, if you get it all serious about it, well, that's your problem. I'm just having fun, guys, is all I'm doing. And as far as this VCLT stuff is concerned... You know, all I want is Christmas cards. You know, honest to God, right? Records and music and stuff like that. You guys don't know nothing. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, let's get into this. Uh, 30 country hits, two record set, original songs, major artists. Looks neat. Who the hell's on this? Sherry Reed, Dolly Parton, Dickie Lee, George Hamilton, uh, Waylon Jennings, Bobby Bear, Nat Stuckley, Hank Snow. Got a lot of them here. A couple I, I don't know. So this should be quite interesting for me. I'm a country guy. I love country. I grew up on it. I'm an old rocker that loves the blues, though, but I like country, too, eh? There we go. Country. Well, where are we going to put these, Bob? We'll put them right here. <laughs> What's next here? <laughs> Roger Miller, Little Green Apples. I like this guy. You don't ever see his music. I got a, I actually have an album of his, and uh, I got a couple of his 45s, eh? He was quite the, quite the artist, Roger Miller. He was funny. <laughs> he was a great one. Uh, From a Jack to a King. Is that on here? I know I get a, from a jack to a king, you, you get a, I got a strike for that years ago. I haven't tried putting it up since, though. Little Green Apples, that's a good chug-a-lug, chug-a-lug. <laughs> Make me want to holler, howdy-ho! <laughs> Great tune. 
Ooh, honey. Is that that milk soppy honey tune? Uh, who the hell did that? Oh, I hated that song. Oh, boy. Ruby, don't take your love to town. You dirty little tramp, you. Very good. <laughs> Roger, Mara. Jimmy Wakely. Jimmy Wakely. I don't know. Jimmy Wakely. What the hell does he do here? Heartaches? Heartaches by the number. That wasn't a Jimmy Wakely original, was it? I don't know. I'm not familiar with this guy. Got a couple of nice tunes on here. I don't know if they're his or he covered them. Lonely Street's one I really like. Well, Four Walls. It's, he's doing a lot of covers there, it looks like. This should be quite interesting. Jimmy Wakely. Hmm. Something new for Bobby. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Brenda Lee. Little Miss Dynamite. I got quite a few of her 45s. I think I only have one album by her. This chick is, what a voice, eh? Brenda Lee. What a voice this girl had. I guess I got maybe, I bet you I got seven or eight of her 45s. What's this here? Oh, that twiddles. Oh, that's a, that's a groovy little color. The Turtles Greatest Hits 2 record set. Happy Together again, they're calling this. Look at the two little toitles. I, I never get that right, these damn camera phones and all of that. Kind of psychedelic looking. I, all these covers are... Nowadays, they, they want to get them sort of psych. No, I'm not going to pull the records out. I never did on any of the rest of them, so I, you know, why bother now? Toitles. <laughs> Bob Marley and the Waiter, Whaler, Soul Rebel. What label would this one be on? Trojan Records. Do I have a Marley on Trojan? I don't think so. All my uh, Marley records are, you know, first presses from way back when. Soul Rebel. Let's see here. Don't recognize any of uh, the guys producing that. I used to have a pile of records from Jamaica. Yo, know, this would be about 1982. I did a, uh, a record shop on Eglinton Avenue. It was a Jamaican record shop. I was a furnace guy, and I was in the basement, and all, there was all kinds of records on the floor. And I actually found a set of scales in the boiler, in the, the clean out doors of the boiler. Naturally, I, I took it. <laughs> My job <clears throat> was to uh, fix and clean out the furnace. This was the summertime. So I grabbed, uh, I, I went upstairs and I told the guy about the records. I says, listen, all them records on the floor. I says, can I have some of them? He said, eh, take them all of you on, man. No problem. I don't sell them. And uh, so I uh, I grabbed about, uh, I don't know, maybe 25, two dozen, two maybe 30, 45s, eh? I got rid of them after about two or three years, though, because I, uh, I had to move. I didn't have my record. All, uh, you know, I didn't have no music uh, station, right? So I got rid of them all. And, boy, I wish I'd have kept them. They'd be worth a fortune now, some of them. Yep. Bobby likes the uh, reggae. It's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's rock in a sense. To me, it is. Oh, look at this. 24 Fulton Street, Jefferson Airplane, Grace Slick, what a little trollop she was, eh? <laughs> Look at that, talk about psychedelia. <clears throat> well, they were into it. Yeah, so was I, does that matter? I didn't mind psychedelics at all. I could handle them. Mushrooms, THC, uh, the best of them, though, would be the little psilocybin mushrooms from... Uh, Prince Edward Island. Any place else, they're okay, but they're not as good as the ones from Prince Edward Island. <coughs> uh, 
they uh, they were really good. MDA was kind of similar, but uh, actually the best of the hallucinogens was uh, MDA, the love drug they called it. Uh, <laughs> who cares, right guys? And next up here we got the legend, Johnny Winter, third degree. Play me in your store, it says. I've got uh, three or four Johnny Winters albums. This guy is incredible, eh? He liked the drugs and the women and all of that. He was one funny-looking albino. Skinny as a rake, this guy. <laughs> Brian, I'm telling you, all this, all this music, and there's still more in there. This stuff here costs a fortune, plus it costs 80 goddamn dollars to send. What are you, crazy? Holy shit, man. I started ordering stuff for you, actually, uh, about four or five days ago from the Internet. I don't get out that much anymore, you know, the record stores and stuff like that. I find, actually, the Internet is actually cheaper than the record stores, believe it or not. You know, that's mailing it and everything else like that. It's either roughly the same price or cheaper. I mean, everything I buy off the Internet's cheap. I, uh, oh, my God. I want to get funky. Albert King. This has got, uh, well, I want to get funky. It's a fantastic record. There's another one on here that I, <coughs> it's really, ah. Uh, yeah, cross cuts. Uh, this has got two or three really, really great Albert King songs. Now, this is a later. This is in the 60s. Or when was this? Let's see if I can catch a date here. 1973, 1974. This was a little later in his career. I've seen Albert, eh? Well, I've seen all the Kings. Well, not all of them. i never seen Don King with the hair, eh? But I've seen Albert, and I've seen BB, and I've seen Freddie. I actually took my boss. Years ago, and his wife down to see uh, Freddie King at a upstairs at a blues bar right, on Bloor Street. I forget the name of it now. And uh, <laughs> they they uh, they had never been into blues or seen it before, and they just sat there like this. Holy mackerel! What is this? They didn't know what to make of it. Actually, Albert King, one of the best. Oh, look at this too. <laughs> <coughs> Now, this guy here, this guy, he, he's, well, he's one of the world's greatest guitar players that ever was. You can stick him up there with Hendrix. Actually, he was a little more adept than Hendrix. Uh, Hendrix interpretations and inventions were supreme. But this guy here, technically, and, you know, and what he could do with a guitar, he, he was just <laughs> incredible. And I mean incredible. He, uh, well, he had a rough life. A lot of guys did. He committed suicide, hung himself in a jail cell, if I remember correctly. Eh, oh well. Roy Buchanan, boy, can he play. What else we got in there? Oh. What, what? Rolling Stones from the vault. I, I, I think I... Oh, no, I got a different one. I got another Rolling Stones from the vault. Which one's that? I think that's the J Japanese one. This one here is from San Jose. A live performance. Stones, my favorite band of all time. They are incredible. The world's greatest rock and roll band. No kidding. Oh, it's an unreleased, unre-released concert from the No Security Tour. Career-spanning set list. Whatever all that means. Oh, it's three LPs in here. Jumpin' Jack Fash, Painted Black, Midnight Rambler, Honky Tonk Woman, <laughs> Sympathy for the Devil, Get Off of My Clock. Ain't nobody better than the Stones. Sorry, Beatle fans, but... Yeah, the Beatles aren't as good as the Stones, period. Or as good as Hendrix, for that matter. Beatles were commercial. I mean, they did a lot of great music, but that was all teeny bopper shit. I mean, in 1963, when they come out here in Canada, and in 64, I seen their very first TV show, or very first movie, 
the scene them on Ed Sullivan when they come out, and all it was was teenage girls, 12, 11, 12, 13, maybe 14, screaming, tearing their hair out, and everything else like that. <laughs> I mean, sure, they did some great covers early. I mean, you know, and, I, well, they did some great R&B covers early, the same as the Stones, and, uh, but then they, you know, they were writing their own stuff, and, you know, they, they went off and did some incredible music. But they're not the best thing that ever lived, you know. That's what freaks me out about the Beatles more than anything else is, is the fans. What else have we got in here? Holy shit, look at this one. How the hell do I get this out of here? Nothing else in here. Look at this. The Atlantic Blues box set. I remember Rob telling me that he seen uh, the Atlantic uh, record companies. They did a show with all their artists, Ruth Brown and, you know, all their artists, right? And Rob was at this one here. And that would have been, a, I mean, that would have been an incredible gig to see. Rob's seen some pretty good gigs. I have too, for that matter. Well, this is this is you know I've actually looked at uh, played a lot of this music. That's a four record four record set, or maybe it's a book and three records. Look at that, eh? <laughs> Ruth Brown, she built this company, eh? Brian. You're crazy. That thing, th th this thing here costs over $200. There's no doubt in my mind. A 200 American, that's about $1,000 Canadian. <laughs> I love you for it though, brother. I don't know how much. have VCLT stuff, I'm telling you. Yeah, I feel obligated and, and that's too bad. You know, it's just the way people are, right? You know, somebody does something nice for you, you want to reciprocate. You want to, you know, you just want to do that, right? You guys amaze me. Anyhow, later, boys and girls. Brian. <laughs> Hope you catch a monster fish because of that. One of these days, I think I'm going to go down there and teach you how to fish. <laughs> how do you shut this off? Well, there we go. Oh, right here.